I'm going to show some examples now of deepening sleep or anesthesia. Um, some of the examples that I will be showing are from this textbook by um, Crespel and uh, Gilles, um, and uh, provide some really um, helpful examples of different EEG waveforms. Here is one example to which I wanted to draw your attention. And uh, again, I've outlined the uh, frontal pole uh, montage on the left-hand side uh, to illustrate what can be detected there. But this is from a, a full uh, 1020 montage. And what is noticeable uh, on these EEG waveforms is, first of all, there is some uniformity developing among all the EEG waveforms. And what tends to happen as sleep deepens or anesthesia deepens is that the waveforms become more similar to one another and that the features that one tends to see in one uh, is often replicated in, in all of the channels. And in this particular channel, there is uh, this K complex and then uh, sleep spindles. And those are features that tend to occur during uh, stage, uh, uh, typically stage two non-REM sleep, and uh, signify that the thalamus is hyperpolarized and signals don't uh, get transmitted from the periphery through the thalamus to the cortex. This is an example uh, from teaching modules that we have used and uh, published in the journal Anesthesiology, which show uh, uh, from a frontal montage, an EEG trace, possibly a K complex and a sleep spindle um, similar to the trace that I just showed. As uh, anesthesia then becomes deeper, or in this example, as sleep becomes deep, deeper, this is stage three sleep, and the features that are present in numerous leads, including the uh, frontal montage on the left hand side, are these delta waves with sleep spindles on top of the delta waves. And this is a typical pattern of stage three sleep and also of surgical anesthesia. As sleep deepens even further, um, there is more prominence of delta waves, but sleep spindles can still be seen um, on this particular montage, which is the uh, front of the montage on the left-hand side. Uh, these two chaps, uh, Dr. Jamie Slay and Dr. Uh, Rob Sanders, are two of the collaborators on the ISCAP project, and they have recently written an article highlighting the importance of sleep spindles and delta waves um, to anesthesia practitioners and critical care practitioners. And specifically, they suggest that during non-REM sleep and general anesthesia, uh, the presence of these uh, waxing and waning uh, sleep spindles um, often occurring on delta waves uh, suggest that the cortex and thal thalamus are hyperpolarized and that it is unlikely that information is transmitted uh, from the periphery through the thalamus. And they also suggest that it is possible as well that noxious stimuli um, are not transmitted when um, such hyperpolarization exists. And their hypothesis, which I think is something worth testing, is that uh, um, using the EEG in this manner and detecting these waveforms might be uh, uh, practically useful in the intensive care unit and in the operating suite. Here is an example uh, of an EEG clip uh, during general anesthesia, and I'm going to play that and show you the features that are shown. Um, and this patient, uh, under anesthesia, had delta waves and you can see runs of delta waves, and there are also um, sleep spindles entrained uh, on the delta waves. And you can see the sleep spindles show nicely in the uh, uh, sweep speed at 50 millimeters per second, and on the top waveform you can see the fairly rhythmic uh, delta pattern. As sleep or anesthesia becomes even deeper, you lose the spindles, and in this example, it's almost a pure delta pattern. So in the Fourier transform, if you broke this waveform down into its components, it would be comprised almost entirely of delta waves. And uh, this is an example 
uh, of a still clip from the operating room, there are four different sweep speeds. And uh, this shows the repeated delta pattern with very few other waveforms present. 